All right, this is one of the first videos for Math 5500. Uh, from the syllabus, you can see that uh, you will be introduced to using R. Um, says it right there. So uh, the purpose of this video is to introduce you to R. Uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of pretty crazy things with R before the, the, the course is over, but today I'm going to keep it very simple. Just run through uh, how to download R and uh, just, just do some some very 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 basic uh, things in R. So, uh, first thing you would need to do is go to a browser, and I prefer Google Chrome. Uh, and just type in R. So click it. Um, now, you know when I create my videos, I, I, I try to create them where there, you know, there's not a timestamp, but there's not much I can do about this because uh, there, there seems to be new versions come out quite often uh, so whatever the new version is uh, more than likely at the top of the page you have sort of a generic download uh, R link what this does is it takes you to the uh, comprehensive R archive network uh, if you'll come down to the United States uh, which I use uh, you, you know you have uh, quite a few choices it really doesn't matter it used to uh, because some Crayons were more stable than others, but um, uh, not recently. I will tell you, as a University of Kentucky fan, it's kind of hard for me to choose Duke or Indiana, but I'm going to get over myself, and I'm going to choose Duke. The next thing I would do is I would download R for Mac, because I have a Mac machine, and the next thing I would do the latest release. In this case, it's 4.02. And I would download that, uh, just click it and download it. What will happen, and in my case, it downloaded uh, right here. Uh, once it's downloaded, I want to click the package. Uh, download time should be, be very, very, very quick. Uh, if I'm in my office, I can use da usually download uh, the latest version of R in you know, 15 to 20 seconds. All right, so let's just run through the, um, the process. Uh, license, you know. Read that uh, if, if you want. I've read it. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. And just like that, uh, we uh, download R pretty quickly. <laughs> well sort of quickly. Probably going to take you about the same amount of time as well, so uh, at least we're working on it together. At least hopefully we are. All right, guys, uh, close. Move to trash. Now, what I want, uh, you know, I use R a lot, so I'm going to go to uh, applications, and I'm going to drag R down to where it's accessible. And I'm going to click it. And guys, as easy as that is, we now have R open to where we can uh, do, do some just basic stuff. Now, if I want to uh, get some data in R, uh, which is what we do in statistics, right? Uh, one way I could do is just type in the data. So uh, let's just, let's, for example, I could type in X, uh, one, two, three, and I could um, oh and type in y is uh, I don't know two five eight. So if I wanted to uh, look at some just basic statistics, uh, the mean of x, uh, I could look uh, the standard deviation for x. I could easily get. The mean for y I could easily get, and of course the standard deviation for y I could easily get. Now, uh, if I wanted to look at the relationship between x and y, uh, for example, if I just wanted to look at the correlation coefficient, uh, I could um, get that like this, whether it's uh, a change of one unit in my x and change of three units in my y, so the correlation being one uh, makes sense. Now, 
probably more interesting and applicable will be a data set, uh, a larger data set. Uh, for example, I have a data set here called District, and I will tell you from, from hours and hours and hours of failure, uh, it's best if we save our data sets in Excel uh, using the .csv extension because it's easy to get into R. So what I would do here is I would name my data. I'm not very creative, so I'm going to call this data and do read.csv. And then I'm going to da uh, district.csv. And guess what? It's going to fail. And the reason it's going to fail is because the default directory where R is going to go look for files uh, is not your desktop. So every time you log in, uh, you just have to change that. So the easiest, or at least the first thing I always do is uh, let's find out where the working directory is currently. So we can do that uh, just with get wd. My working directory is in users SSU math masters program. So what I need to do is I need to put desktop on the end of that. So uh, R will go look on the desktop uh, to get uh, the file that I need and I always put it on the desktop you don't have to uh, I always do just because uh, it's an easy place uh, to find it so now I have set to a working directory so now when I go back up if I hit the up arrow I can go back through my commands and now I can see that I uh, I implement this and it's going to work. Now, here's the deal. I can type data and you'll see they have a large data set, uh, about 480 cases, I think four variables. But if I go to, for example, one of the variables is, is, is pre. So if I want to see the average pre, it would make sense that I would type pre, right? Well, it's not found because when we import a data set from our desktop uh, we have to load the data uh, oops we have to attach the data before we can actually uh, analyze the data so now when I go to meme pre uh, you can see that I get 72.15 is the mean pre I do the same thing you know if there was a was, was there a post uh, I'll tell you something I like to do. Um, I like to just do head data. So it gives me the first uh, six rows. And I, I'll tell you what, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Well, I'll pump the brakes just a little bit. This is a classic um, format uh, of a data table that we'll use. Because when we read left to right, we have uh, the cases. And when we uh, read vertically, we have, uh, of course, our variables. Now, people who don't have a strong background or at least a limited background in statistics, when they see a table like this, they naturally read left or right. Why? That's where the juicy gossip is. Uh, we can see now that this student, the third student in our data set, uh, has a 55 on their pretest. They decreased drastically on their post-test. Uh, of course, I don't know what the scale was here, but at least the score went down. Uh, the pre may have been on a 100-point uh, scale, and the post may have been on a, who knows, a 40-point scale. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I know they're from District A, and I know that they are in a STEM track. Um, people with a strong background in statistics could care less about reading left or right. We care about vertically, right? First thing I look at is I see pre is quantitative. Well, I start thinking, well, what's the box plot look like? What's the histogram look like? What kind of, what's the distribution shape? Uh, what's the mean? What's the median? What's the standard deviation? So what's the measures of central tendency? What are the measures of variability? Same thing for post because it's quantitative. When I get to district and track, I can see that they're not quantitative. I can see that these are categorical. So I start thinking, well, what percentage of... Uh, so if I go up, I can see that the school districts look like they uh, run from A to H. So what percentage of students are in A? What percentage of students are in B? And so on. And same thing with tracks. So I uh, can 
take a look. If I want to look at a histogram of a quantitative uh, variable, it's really easy to do. And we can see that we have, um, uh, you know, classic kind of bell-shaped and symmetric distribution. Do not, please do not, unless you want to get on my last nerve, call that a normal distribution. Normal distribution is a uh, probability distribution. Uh, it's a theoretical model. We have a sample here. Um, so sample histograms don't lead to normal distributions. They lead to approximately bell-shaped and symmetric distributions. Uh, we could also look at uh, a box plot of pre. And again, we uh, have no outliers and uh, we have a relatively symmetric distribution. Uh, Switching gears to district, uh, what I would want to do there is probably just look at a table. It's not going to give me a table. It's just going to give me a, uh, a frequency across uh, the, the districts. So we can see that we have um, roughly, well, I'm roughly uh, exactly a symmetric um, uh, proportion of uh, students in each of the districts. Uh, same thing for table across uh, track. We can see that we have 160 students who are in QR, 160 in stats, 160 in STEM. Now, I think the interesting part actually comes to when we uh, look at the, the, the combination of the variables, or at least the relationship between the variables. So, uh, you know, if, if I were interested in this, uh, I don't even really know what the status set represents, but if I was really interested in it, I may want to, you know, look at the means of pre across district. And it turns out that that's really, really easy to do using the T apply function. So I can do pre uh, across district. And I want the function to be me. All right. Oops. First mistake I've ever made, guys. All right. Um, so as we glance across the, um, the districts, we can see that the pre-score average uh, was quite a bit higher for D, uh, especially than uh, A and H. Uh, I can go up and maybe I just want to change district to to track. And um, from this information, it looks like the pre-score for the QR students was, was quite a bit higher than uh, for stats, and especially uh, for STEM. If I want to get fancy with some box plots, um, I can do a box plot of, um, I don't know, let's just do post uh, across uh, district. I can see that there's some outliers. These uh, isolated dots right here are outliers. So for uh, District uh, F, there are no outliers. District E, uh, there's uh, an outlier. So it looks like uh, District F, uh, for the most part, um, performed the highest. So these dark bars in the middle, as you probably know, uh, stand for the median. So this is the lowest value, this is Q1, this is the median, Q3. The highest value that's not yet an outlier, the highest value would be 60, which is the kid from school district A. Within that district, uh, this observation was ruled to be an outlier. If you remember when we did, uh, well, I don't even know if we did uh, post uh, as a, as a whole. Yeah, when we did post as a whole, uh, we didn't get outliers. So that outlier uh, would be in comparison to the other scores uh, within the school district. So guys, just some cool things that we can do. We're, we're going to get um, uh, pretty messy uh, with this. Uh, if we want to find sample size, uh, you would think you would do sample size, but you don't. You would do length. So if you want to do length, uh, for example, pre. Uh, we can see that we have 480 um, scores uh, in pre. Something that we can actually do, and this will be the last thing I'll show you because I don't want this to go too long. Uh, we can just uh, go summary data 
and it really doesn't give you anything very meaningful for the categorical variables but it does give you some decent stuff for the for the quantitative it gets you it gives you uh, the five number summary the min q1 median q3 and max and then it throws in for some reason it throws in the mean uh, but it doesn't throw in the standard deviation so once standard deviation you gotta you gotta earn it you gotta type it in and again it's easy to do Standard deviation will be 8.02. Well, gang, that's all I got. Just uh, keeping it simple. I want you to uh, uh, get R downloaded to your machine. You'll use it on your assignments. You'll use it. Uh, every instructional video will use R. You'll use it on your exams. Uh, so uh, use it a lot. All right. Take care.